Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Tony Torrance here. Today we're going to tie the jigged 20 incher and let's get started. I'm going to start with a C400 BL size 8. I like to tie these in 8s and 10s, but you can tie them clear down to 14s if you like. Um, we're going to put some 0 0.020 lead and I'm going to put about nine wraps, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now let's do eight, about eight wraps. And then I'm going to take a set of hemostats here and just squeeze the first three wraps to flatten them out and then slide them right up into that bead. Again, that's a 532nd bead on a size eight. Then I will take some uni stretch and start by building a thread dam right in behind the lead. And then bring that up through and cover that to start. Now at this point, you could um, flatten that lead if you want to have that flatter profile. What I'm going to do is use this uni stretch to build my underbody so I get the shape that I want. And I'm just going to counter turn this uh, bobbin to uh, make that lay flat. And I'm just going to shape this underbody. I want to have a pretty good taper. It'll almost look like a top when I get done. And I'll leave everything clean up by the um, bead. And you'll say, well, why are you creating such a big underbody? Well, this is a big fly, and I want to have a certain shape to imitate those uh, small stonefly nymphs that are around this time of year. So I do this to make sure I get the shape that I desire in this fly. So this is kind of an hourglass shape to start. And then I will come in with my 10 Vivas and secure all that down. And if you desire, you can put a drop of super glue under onto the lead before you wrap it with the uh, uni stretch. Now we'll tie on some goose biots in brown. And I always start with the one away from me so that I can make sure I get it lined up the way I want it to be. And I'm going to come down onto this bend a little bit. And I'll come back up. Lay in my next goose by it and get it matched up. These love to um, slide. So you really got to pin them down and almost set them a little bit low on the shank. And then as you lay thread on, they will twist into position. Usually they've been dividing quite well, but I'm just going to go ahead and put a thread wrap in between them to get them to splay properly and don't cinch them down super tight because you will um, cut the by it. Okay, and then I'm just going to come right up on here, lay that material right up onto the thorax and the abdomen so I keep my taper. Okay. Um, Umqua Feather Merchants has released this fly and they're using um, this flexi floss type material. They call it um, Uniflex. There's a lot of different names for it. And I'm using uh, a hairline product here in tan, but I think that they were using is ginger. I just happen to have tan, so that's what I've been tying them with. And I just fished this fly the other day and, and it's, uh, it's a great fly. It, 
a great downfly for Euro nymphing. Um, it's got some decent weight to it, so if you put it on your, as your point fly, um, it helps get the other ones down, and the fish eat these just as well as they've been eating the dropper lately. So, so I'm just going to create my peacock chenille, if you will, by four strands of peacock and then bringing some thread in there. Get that started. And then I'll twist that together just to make it a little tougher. Make sure that you uh, don't leave any big gaps in between your peacock as you bring it up because you can, you know, you can use a gold oval floss as well for your rib on, or a gold oval tinsel um, for your rib, which I do on some of my patterns. Um, when I'm using less lead, I will use the gold or use a different color so I can identify them in my box if I want a little lighter pattern. But the, the gold oval tinsel looks really nice and fish as well. Let me give her one more turn there. And tie that off. Now you can tie this fly um, much you know upside down so that the the wing case sets here and the legs come off. And I you know it's a little more of a hassle to do that, and I've done that in some of my previous videos. So I rent Renegade recently and uh, tied them just like I normally would on the hook and fished them and uh, there is absolutely no difference in um, how well the fish grab them. So, oh, let me get my rib in here first. So we're going to bring our rib up through. I'm going to pull tight and then start loosening up a little bit as I come up through the fly with this. And you're only going to get about four ribs in there. And pull taunt, cut it close. And then now what I have here is a turkey quill. And if you just take your, um, your standard turkey quill, and I, I go and I put a little soft tex on the back. And I'm just going to lay this here and let it kind of come all the way around so it cups. I've actually a little off, so I'm going to undo this and show you again. I'm just going to slide that over just a little bit. Now the soft tex obviously is loosened up a little bit on this feather I didn't get enough on. But anyway, so you uh, put a little soft X on the back of the feather, um, coat it, and then it just makes the feather tougher. So when you pull it over, it all stays together and you don't have any splitting or anything like that. So I have a partridge feather here that I'm going to lay in just in the center, the belly of the feather up. So as you can see, when I pull it over, the feather will cup down. And I've just pulled them the, f the strands or the uh, barbules down and I'm going to lay that right in at the juncture there of the base of the wing case. We're going to dub some hair's ear dubbing here and um, it'll take quite a long noodle to build up the thorax even with the underbody there um, to get the shape that I'm looking for. Um, so I'll come down and you can listen to me yak here for a minute while I get all this dubbing in place. But um, all seriousness, the, this fly has been very, very productive for me and it, it works really well for half pounders with a rubber leg um, added on each side of the thorax. Um, so that's another uh, Another thing you can do with this fly, the half pounders really like it as well. 
So I'm going to bring this around and just start right in behind that bead and work my way backwards. And then start working my way forwards and I need a, a little more dubbing so I'm going to add a little more dubbing. Just a little much in there. Okay. Now I'll bring my partridge over the top here. And you can see I've pulled it beyond. I'm going to turn this so you can see it a little better. It comes just beyond the bead there. It just worked out this time. I don't have to strip any barbules. And I'm just going to lay that thread over there get it in position, snug it down, put a couple of wraps, put a wrap in front, and then come down the stem here and trim that out. And then I will bring my wing case that hopefully stays all together nice since I just gave you the spiel on soft X and uh, guide all these barbules of the uh, partridge into place. And then I'm going to bring a nice easy wrap over the top of that because I'd like it to come down the sides just like it normally would and not pinch up right on top of it. It's going to do that a little bit. Get a couple tight wraps, pull down. So there I have that. Now I'm going to come in and just trim away the remaining piece of turkey. Okay. So now I want to show you something else that's a little different besides doing the underbody. I've been using um, in my tube flies um, a little bit of super glue on the thread, you know, to, to tie it off. Well, I saw some guys doing this on trout fly. I thought, well, you dummy, you could be doing that there too. And it would um, reduce the number of wraps, make it a little more durable, not have to soak your fly in head cement. So I started doing this the other day, and especially on little flies, you can just put a little bit of super glue on there, and um, it just really works slick. So, you know, take your brushable super glue and just lay it on the thread, and then put your usual three to four wraps of a whip finish, and you're done. I mean, that thing is not going to come undone. So there you have the 20-incher. If you wanted this fly to be a little flatter, um, you, know, you could even come in at this point and uh, flatten it out a little bit. And, uh, and one other thing you can do to make this fly a little more durable is just take a little um, UV uh, clear fly finish, which is the Loon Flow product, and just lay a little, um, a, just a fine bead. You're not going to build this up. Some of them I do and put a glossy back on them, and I, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, to the fish, but what this will do is this stuff will soak in here and it'll lock that partridge hackle in and um, I'm going to let it soak in so it looks just like the regular turkey and then when I hit it it's going to lock everything in place and make the fly a little more durable. So that's a, another thing you can do with this fly. So that's the 20 incher. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.